of it. But that didn't sound like a lot, a lot of responsibility. I guess it could be. But, yeah. You think Serna wants to go? <coughs> All right. Go ahead and get started here. I promise I will try not to do that again. Of that, I promise that I swear well, to God I will try. Thing went pretty good. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. No. Cut it off. Yeah. Good. All right. Oh, that's very helpful. Oh, she makes me look bad. Right. They just got to guess. Right. They all sound alike. All right. When all you're saying is. <laughs> Christopher would. Christopher would, had a better way of doing it. He would not wait for the motion. He would say, "In commissioner bad means second. So he would. He would just put the name attached to it. everything. No, but it was enough to Things help the job. Adjournment or whatever. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that was the most controversial of issues. Thank you, Mr. Christoph. Wait, I didn't say a word. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's yeah, that we're hazing her. Uh huh. Yeah. That's perfect. That's it. That's no, what you do. There'll be no motion. Then. That's right. <laughs> now what? The smarty <laughs> pants. So what do you do now, smarty pants? You better read your book. On. All right. <clears throat> All right. These speakers are on. So uh, good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the uh, West Sacramento Port Commission. Uh, all commissioners present. Uh, Commissioner Ledesma uh, being absent. Um, so. And, and Johannesson, I'm sorry, Commissioner Johannesson is absent. So thank you, Mr. Christoph, for filling in this evening. <laughs> doing my job. That's right, doing your job. So uh, to start off this evening, uh, Commissioner Sandy, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. All right, uh, uh, let's see. So uh, item one, presentations by the public on matters not on the agenda, but within the jurisdiction of the commission. Anybody here to speak on items that are not on the agenda? Seeing none and having no slips to speak. Uh, item two is the consent agenda, which is consideration of the uh, September 23rd Port Commission meeting minutes. So need a motion to- I'll move approve. I'll right. move approval so minutes. We have a motion and a second. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Cabaldon, for that second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. I have to abstain. With one, one abstention. Thank you, Mr. Christoph, who was not present. So the motion carries. Uh, regular agenda item. Item three is consideration of a presentation by the Department of Water Resources on the Sacramento River Basin Wide Feasibility Study. And uh, Mr. Raven, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Chair, Port Commission members. Um, although tonight's presentation is primarily by DWR, about the subject Sacramento River Basin Wide Feasibility Study. There will be some portions of the presentation that will be presented by myself, uh, Greg Faven, Flood Protection Manager, as well as Rick Toft, Port uh, Business Manager, on related elements from both the flood program and, and port operations. Um, so speaking on behalf of DWR tonight is uh, the Flood System Implementation Manager, Jeremy Eric. He's got uh, over 15 years with the Department of Water Resources. He led the development of the 2012 Central Valley Flood Protection Plan, and since 2013, he's been working to implement uh, elements of that plan, including the Basin Wide Feasibility Study and some of the regional uh, flood management planning efforts that have been going on in the region. So he's here tonight to provide a presentation on the status of the Basin Wide Feasibility Study and the focused evaluation of flood system improvements um, and potential improvements in the Yolo Bypass. So without further ado, Jeremy Eric. Thanks, Greg. Um, good evening, um, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Again, Jeremy, Eric, I'm pleased to be here in front of you today. Um, Greg and I did not coordinate haircuts for this event, but <laughs> it may appear that way. So I just want to keep the record straight there. Um, so uh, is the, the PowerPoint projected? Oh, there it is. Thank you. Okay. 
So as Greg mentioned, I'm going to give you a, a brief kind of status update. It's going to be fairly brief. We only have about I only have about six slides to cover related to the the Sacramento River Basin Wide Feasibility Study. There's a lot more information that could be shared that I'm not going to go into tonight. Um, we can always come back at a later date if you want a more uh, thorough briefing by our by our planning team on this on this study. A lot of folks involved in this. Um, so uh, I'm going to try to see if I can figure out which button to click to progress the slides. Oops, I, I tried the left one. There we go. Okay. It's a sensitive roller. Okay. So I want to just start by briefly providing some background and context to, to why we're conducting the basin-wide feasibility studies and what's relevant uh, to, the, to the Port Commission in, in that regard. The Central Valley Flood Protection Plan, as I, I will assume that you've heard of the Central Valley Flood Protection Plan, but if not, um, it was adopted by the Flood Protection Board in, in June of 2012. And the plan really provides a framework, a system-wide investment framework for flood system improvements that the state has interest in, in implementing over the long term, uh, really to, to meet the needs of the system for long-term resiliency and sustainability. As our flood system has been around for, for almost 100 years now, it's done well in, in some of our major flood events, but it's, it's taxed pretty, pretty much to its limits, and we do expect that we will see larger storms in the future. So the plan provides sort of a framework for <clears throat> uh, looking, looking way ahead and, and, and providing that value for our, our, uh, our residents. Um, the, the Central Valley Flood Protection Plan recognizes that one of the major problems we face is that the system lacks capacity. So. In the face of larger storm events, the system lacks the capacity to pass those larger floods, and we need to expand that capacity so that we're all safer and, um, you know, we want to protect lives and property and protect and enhance our environment. Um, the, the bypasses, if you didn't know, carry about 80 percent of the flood flows in the system. And the CBFPP, the Central Valley Flood Protection Plan, concluded that, that the, the biggest opportunity for improving the system resiliency is through expansion of our bypass system. Um, the, the Central Valley Flood Protection Plan is being updated in 2017, and as part of that ongoing effort to update the plan, DWR is, is evaluating in detail the array of elements that were described in the plan through two efforts, our regional um, flood management planning effort and our basin-wide feasibility studies. So we're taking that high-level conceptual plan and we're drilling into some of those improvements, those on-the-ground flood system improvements and trying to refine what those look like, how large they are, where they're located. Um, the, uh, one of the major focuses of the, of the Sacramento River Basin Wide Feasibility Study is the Yolo Bypass. The Yolo Bypass is essentially the hub of the Sacramento River system. All the water flows basically into, through, or around the Yolo Bypass before it um, goes out into the delta. So it's a primary focus. Um, in the Sacramento River Basin Wide Feasibility Study. It's not the only focus, but it is a, a primary focus and has a significant amount of relevance to um, the City of West Sacramento and, and the, the Port Commission as well. Um, several features within the Yolo Bypass are being evaluated for, um, for consideration to make those improvements. It's not just one improvement. It's a, it's a suite of, of actions that we would take um, to improve the system. One of those features which I'm here to talk to you a little bit more detail today is the deep water ship channel. And so I'll get into that. But that kind of gives you the background and the context of, of uh, why we're here today. Um, and just to briefly orient you, I don't have the laser pointer, but um, I don't know if I can, if the, oops, let's see. Can you guys see the mouse on your screen? Okay. Mm -hmm. So just to give you a quick orientation, um, so this area here is the city of West Sacramento. Um, here's the Deepwater Ship Channel running north to south and the turning basin of the port right here. Um, a couple of the major flood facilities I'll point out are the Sacramento Weir and Sacramento Bypass. The Sacramento Weir is operated and maintained by DWR. Um, the gates are, are manually um, opened, if you will, when the stage at I Street reaches 27 and a half feet. So it's a fairly significant flood event coming through the system before the Sacramento uh, Weir gets opened up. That water then flows into the bypass. Um, sorry, I wish I would have brought the laser pointer. I'm losing the mouse here. That water then flows into the Yola bypass through the Sacramento bypass. Up north, we have the Fremont Weir. Um, the Fremont Weir 
conveys water coming through the, from the Sutter Bypass across the Sacramento River into the Yolo Bypass uh, during, during large events. Um, then the Yolo Bypass itself is obviously the big blue area there on the map. Um, its original purpose as designed was to divert floodwaters off of the main stem Sacramento River and, and bypass the communities of, of Sacramento, West Sacramento, and other areas. So it has, has served that function, served it well. Um, we're looking at expanding the bypass to, to improve that overall resiliency. Um, the, the focus of this study was to improve the overall performance, not only of the Yola Bypass, but of the entire system. To do that, we looked at, and this is kind of going to give you a conceptual framework, and then I'll have a slide where I show, show a little bit more detail. But to improve that uh, system performance, we looked at expanding the two weirs, the Sacramento Weir and the Fremont Weir. Um, basically shifting water off of the main stem Sacramento River and putting it into the bypass. However, when we pull more water into the bypass, we have to make room for that water. We can't just put it in the bypass and, and, and raise the water levels um, to the detriment of the communities around there and those levees. So we looked at a, a combination of various levee setbacks throughout the region. Um, some along the north um, in the Elkhorn Basin, some along the west near adjacent to Davis, some along the southern portion of the Yolo Bypass. Um, another very prominent feature of our studies has been <coughs> the potential tie-in, <coughs> excuse me, to the Deepwater Ship Channel. <coughs> and that's where I think it's most relevant for, for the discussion today. Um, and I'll get into it a little bit more, but, but that provided the significant, most significant benefits to reducing stage <coughs> within the Yolo Bypass and managing those flows that are coming in from the expanded weirs. <clears throat> so, in the basin-wide feasibility studies, and I, I apologize for the small graphics, but there, there's, a, there's a point to this figure without going into all the details. <clears throat> the green areas on the map represent a range of options that we looked at for expanding the bypass. So, these are essentially our, our different alternatives that we've looked at. All of these include expansion of the Sacramento Weir and the Fremont Weir, and they all include some combination of, of levy setbacks throughout the, throughout the bypass. <clears throat> The, the key element in any option that we, pursue, that we pursue other than the weir expansions is the, the tie-in to the deep water ship channel. Um, as I mentioned, this could provide a significant amount of capacity to manage those additional flows coming into the bypass from widening of the weirs. Um, essentially, it allows us to regain some of the capacity that was lost when the ship channel was, was originally constructed, I think, in 1963. And uh, another thing to highlight here is that this, this option for use of the ship channel has been highlighted in several recent past, recent planning studies. Um, SAFCA has looked at doing this through some of their regional studies. Um, our, our Central Valley Flood Protection Plan and, and basin-wide feasibility studies are obviously looking at it. Um, it was looked at through the West Sacramento uh, GRR in the Kosher uh, study with the Corps. And then the, the most recent regional flood planning effort um, has also looked at this as an option. So although it's a relatively new idea, um, it's, it's, it's gaining momentum in, in the significant benefits that it can provide to uh, the system performance as well as the, the cities of Sacramento and West Sacramento. And by the way, I'm happy to entertain questions throughout if I didn't mention that already. So just stop me at any time if you like. I guess one question I would have is, is um, as you were, <clears throat> as they were looking at these different options, was one of the options that were explored was the uh, the notch, the straightening out of that one area that um, uh, allows water to sort of circulate into the city of West Sacramento instead of going straight down the bypass. Um, by no, I'm not sure by notch what you're referring to. You, uh, notch is the linear expansion from the Sacramento Weir into the bypass. It's, it's not easily seen right there. The terminology <coughs> in this room. It's the area. Right. There. Um, because one of the because reasons is we've around, studied that yeah, before, or we've looked at it before, and um, I've always thought that if you did things to the Sacramento Weir, something was going to have to be done to the rail line. 
and for uh, to allow additional flows through and something also th and then that would mean that the hydrology of the bypass would be improved by putting a levee uh, across that notch so it is a straight shot straight down to the uh, uh, down to Rio Vista and, uh, and, and out I apologize. I'm, I'm not certain about what the notch idea concept is or okay. where it's located without without. So I don't want to speak to it unless I, I okay. knew. No, exactly I understand. Where on the map. Yeah. Well, um, it's something that maybe you can take a look at for later presentation yeah, or it, whatever. Certainly, if there was work that was done that we can that we can look at and I'll talk to Greg maybe after the meeting and, and find out more about uh, specifically. Maybe it's something that we looked at and it's just not the terminology isn't ringing a bell here with me okay. today, but because one of the impediments to water going from <clears throat> the weir and on through is all the vegetation that is in the bypass. That resistance of water being allowed to flow out right. is one of the reasons that the flows from the weir don't get out to the, uh, uh, the delta as quickly as uh, um, as they could. We did do uh, some sensitivity analysis with our hydraulic models on the various um, flow restrictions throughout the bypass of so the the railroad trestle, as right. well as some of the vegetation that's around that. And we, so we did do sensitivity analysis to see how much that affected the overall performance of the system. We did find that there were some localized effects in terms of stage increases around those those railroad trestles but they dissipated out you know fairly fairly quickly in terms of stage so by removing them um, the water didn't make its way through the system any faster but what it did it did do was it reduced that localized effect or that localized impact from a from a stage perspective okay i guess one of the things that i would like to concentrate on a little bit and that is the safety of west sacramento mm -hmm. If you put additional flows into the bypass, the um, south levee that goes mm -hmm. along the bypass and along the uh, what we call the uh, uh, the slough that that goes along the the uh, um, the port itself. There's mm -hmm. a slough, until we can have and it. making sure that. West Sacramento is not negatively mm -hmm. affected right. by additional flows. Right. I think that's a great segue into the next couple of slides because okay, we good. we were also concerned about um, negative hydraulic impacts, if you will, by making improvements in one area. We we need to we're looking at the system as a whole. We're evaluating the entire system, and so if we make improvements in one area, wherever that water goes, we need to make sure that that we're addressing those those impacts you know, downstream. So in this case, and I'll, I'll get into this a little bit more, um, by pulling water off of the main stem Sacramento, Sacramento River and putting it, you know, through those expanded weirs, we're reducing stages significantly in the Sacramento River, which protects that side of West Sacramento. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're making some improvements to the, to the ship channel area where we will protect the, the city and the port from the other side. So let me, let me maybe step through. Yeah, sure. Because yeah, I, I think that you're, I think you're leaving the non-ship channel elements of this now, right? Yes. So in the, on the in the Elkhorn the the Elkhorn District portion of what's outlined here, mm -hmm. you know, the area between us and and Woodland on, mm -hmm. on this side of the bypass. Could you describe a little bit like the, the option option four, for example? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I mean, we're, I'm interested in this both because these are areas that are there's a lot of. Um, uh, economic and personal and social and cultural relationships that we have in our city with the, the, the unincorporated areas immediately to the north and the south of us, and this district's definitely a good example of that. But, and, and so looking at a, at a thing like option four, mm -hmm. where that district is mostly gone, but not gone enough, right. that there used to somehow you still have to maintain roads and, and electricity and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. What's the, what's the thinking around the, 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 the notional thinking around planning for that area? So what, what this array of options represents is sort of a range. It's, it's a bookend, if you will. So option four represents the, the upper bookend of 
what you could do to expand into the Elkhorn upper, upper and lower Elkhorn Basin. Um, and just to look at the hydraulic performance and the effects and benefits of that. And then to evaluate the trade-offs of that option versus the other options. So there has been a lot of coordination with the regional flood management planning effort. Um, we've had conversations, as has the region, with uh, several of the landholders in that area. And uh, the state has met with, with both groups together. Um, and we understand the, uh, some of the sensitivities there. Um, at this time, we're not necessarily pushing forward with an option four sort of footprint. Um, but in the future, there may be some benefit to expanding in, in, in other areas that, that options one, two, and three don't touch, for example, around the interstates. So options one, two, and three avoided um, modifying the, the highways because of that infrastructure impact. Um, however, in the future, if Caltrans makes modifications or has modifications planned to the highways, it presents an opportunity to go back and, and look again at possible expansion into that area if it's, if it's deemed to be necessary. So sort of an adaptive management approach in a, in a way. Um, I don't think that, I think we can um, get the flood benefits that we're looking for, as well as the ecosystem restoration benefits um, by exploring the other options. Um, option, option four simply represents an upper bookend of, of what the hydraulic performance could do if you were to expand into the entire basin. Yeah, but the, the, the challenge with that approach from a, from a non-flood perspective, though, is that you, if I were, if I represented this district on the Board of Supervisors and, and just like every couple of years, a little less of it existed, then a little less, then a little less, there's never any point where it's like, hey, the, how am I going to deal with the impact of relocating the entire road? Right. Or how am I going to, if, if, when we need to, when I need to get the kids to school and there's no longer any access, um, or for our, you know, uh, uh, our residents depend heavily on that, that corridor be able to access the court system and and other key key county services. So they're not they're not part of the flood conversation per se, um, and they would be addressed if if there was a, if you proposed all at once to do something about it. But if you sort of creep over towards the river over time, then there's no there's no then you the, then you lack the ability to 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 fully allocate the the cost of mitigation. Right. And I probably mischaracterized that that aspect of we, we don't plan to. I didn't, make it, to, I didn't mean to make it sound. Sinister. No, it's okay. I'm glad that you. <laughs> I'm glad that you mentioned it because I, I I realized that what I said actually made you think what you said. So I'll clarify. We, we're in looking at this range of options. We're going to go through a process over you know hopefully not too many years because we want to get to the point where we're actually you know implementing some of these projects um, where we will you know essentially negotiate with. Um, the, the local agencies, the landowners, and figure out where, where can we settle on, on a, an alignment of, of a setback levy that, that meets the needs of, of all the parties. And then if, if, the, if, the, if the trade offs are worth you know, the, the cost, if we can get the value out of the performance of the flood system that we need, then that's where basically we will set the levy back to. We're not going to re assess that every five years through our Central Valley Flood Protection Plan updates. I mean, that's, that's a major decision that okay. once it's made, it's made. I was only re <clears throat> referring to the area, let's say we, we went with an option three, for example, leaving the area around the interstate, um, you know, the highways there, leaving those untouched. If there was an opportunity and, and if there was a need to expand a portion of the basin within that, that stretch, that was the part I was talking about that might be done incrementally if there was an opportunity and if there was a need. So all, all I would encourage, encourage you and our county partners and others to be doing is the, the system approach that you're, that you're taking with respect to the flood, flood management be taken with respect to the impacts as well. Because mm -hmm. a, sim a simple property owner by property owner negotiation uh, isn't going to get at those, at, those, at those broader issues, right? It, it will not matter. If, my, if, my, if, if you deal with the setback issue in a way that doesn't affect my property <laughs> too negatively, but you've taken an but you have eliminated my kid's ability to get to high school, mm -hmm. um, you know, down the road, um, or you've interrupted, you know, significantly damaged the, the, the commercial and, and public services corridor. So not that those aren't, you know, the, they're impacts like any other impacts. They need to get, uh, you know, analyzed and sure. addressed and potentially mitigated, but they will not necessarily emerge from a, from a parcel by parcel right. Um, right. analysis at the, in, as, as though the main stake or the only stakeholder is the specific property owner. Right. You know, great points. And, and points are well taken. When we do get into a stronger phase of implementation, we will have to go and get all of our, our, our permits and we will go through a, a CEQA process and likely a NEPA process as well. And 
those sort of impacts will be addressed, I think, at a, a, a finer level of detail and resolution than, say, a programmatic level environmental impact document that was done for the Central Air Flood Protection Plan, which was done, by the way, but again, it wouldn't have d dove into the details that you're talking about. So thank you for that. Any more questions, or do you want me to carry on? So here I'll kind of show you a range of conceptual tie-in locations that we looked at for possible use of the deep water ship channel to manage those increased flows that I mentioned would come into the bypass. Um, first location shown here um, is adjacent to the south cross levee at the southern part of the city. Um, we've modeled a, a weir structure, it's fairly simple, and an operable gate. So the, the purpose of the weir structure is to pull water um, on into the deep water ship channel during during those high flow events and only during those high flow events and the operable gate would be closed during that time period um, we looked at locations ranging all the way up to the uh, just where the the ship channel begins to turn uh, from the northern portion there so there's a range of, of options we could look at here in terms of the location of the the weir and gate as well as the operational parameters. Um, we could look at a whole array of, of alternatives ultimately that would be, need to be done. The goal is to find the optimal solution where you're protecting the, the port, the city, and then you're helping that overall system performance of, of the flood system. Um, some of the considerations when, when optimizing these locations, we'll, we'll need to look at you know, the further north you, you move the, the weir and the gate structure, the more direct benefit you have to um, the hydraulic performance of the Yola bypass because you're essentially expanding the bypass further upstream by doing that. Um, and you also, uh, depends on how you look at the location, but when you move further north, you avoid having to modify certain levees. But then when you move further south, you have to modify other levees. So it kind of is a, a little bit of a, a, a trade off analysis when you look at it. And I think Greg was going to maybe talk about that a little bit more. Um, later on, but either either location or any location that would be looked at would would look at the other levy improvements that are needed to make the the protection to the city of West Sacramento and the poor hole, if you will, at the end. Well, I'm Without. sure that you've gone down or your people have gone engineers have gone up and down the the deep water channel. There's a tremendous amount of erosion between location three and location one. If you look at the bank of the deep water ship channel you'll see where mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know debris or or sand or levee materials have fallen down are you talking about replenishing those or building a um a 200 year uh a 200 year uh, uh levee so that between section three and section one, that certainly could affect the city of West Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And so are you talking about building a levee that is tall enough, sort of like the one that's going on on the Sacramento River right now? Are you talking about doing some of those kinds of things? Yeah, that's a good question. We, we, we are looking at, depending on where we locate the, the gate structure and the weir, we would need to make whatever levee improvements are required to protect the city of West Sacramento. If we're if we're opening up the ship channel to basically be a part of the bypass during high high flow events, we, we most definitely need to consider what other levy improvements are needed. In the basin wide feasibility studies up to this point, I believe the cost estimates um, I know the cost estimates do make some assumptions as to based on the location what levies would need to be raised. Um, a detailed engineering evaluation hasn't gone into it. The, the next phase, if this if this idea gains traction, would need to go into a further level of, of feasibility to look at, you know, specific locations and options and and, and levy improvements that might be needed, as well as um, operation and maintenance concerns. <clears throat> so, hopefully, you can see this. I have a zoomed in version of this in, in here in a second, but. <clears throat> Kind of this is the graphic that I like to say, you know, they say a picture speaks a thousand, a thousand words. I mean, this really does tell the story of performance along the main stem of the Sacramento River 
and up into the Sutter, Sutter Bypass and Feather River. Jeremy, for demonstration purposes, there's a camera above, so if you want to put something on the table and use a pencil to, to point out certain things, I don't know if that's what you need, but it's available to you. Okay. I don't know okay. if I know exactly where the... If you just set it on the table, they'll zoom in on it and you'll see it. I, don't, I mean, I don't this know if that's... pretty small right here. Okay, that's fine. So, um, I'll just describe it. We have, we have colors on the map. I'll try to do my best to describe it. So when looking at the effects of the proposed uh, bypass expansion improvements that we talked about, um, this shows the extent of stage decreases. So improvements to, to water levels throughout the system during a major storm event, like a 200 year event with climate change. Um, it shows that what we're proposing has far reaching positive impacts when you look at the hydraulic performance overall. <clears throat> um, in the, so here, just to orient you, there's the ship channel. Uh, the port there. If you look at the, the outskirts of the, of the map, this is where there's anywhere from two tenths to half a foot of stage reduction as a result of pulling more water into the bypass and expanding the bypass. <clears throat> that, that benefit increases as you get closer to, to the, the weir locations and the city of Sacramento and cities of West, city of West Sacramento. So this area in green that, that I, I highlighted here with the, the, red, the red oval um, provides greater than two feet of stage reduction along the Sacramento River. So again, it's a very significant stage reduction. We're not talking a couple of tens, we're talking a couple of feet. Um, here's just a zoom in. If you look at the Sacramento River at I Street, if you look at that gauge location, um, we see up to three feet of stage reduction, depending on which option we look at. And then if you look at the Sacramento River at Freeport, um, up to about two and, a half, two and a half feet of stage reductions. So. Um, as I said, there's a significant benefit to the city of West Sacramento from the, the Sacramento Riverside, um, and in doing this, it meets the objectives of, of, our, of our, our planning study here for formulating around utilization of the, by, of the bypass um, for those large storm events. And just to give you an idea here, the, the Deepwater Ship Channel, um, about an additional 50 to 60,000 CFS would be brought into the ship channel during this, this large event um, and would increase stages within the ship channel by about two feet. Um, from an operational perspective, just to give you a sense of how often this would happen, um, if you look at the hydrology and the, the historical flood events we've had, assuming a weir elevation of about 27 feet, which is similar to when the Sacramento weir gates are opened, um, water would enter into the ship channel in about a 30 year return period event, which basically means about once every 10 years. If you look at the, the historical flood events, for the most part, once every 10 years, we had a major flood event, and that's when the ship channel would see this water and that, that operable gate that I showed you earlier would be closed to protect the port. Otherwise, the ship channel would remain unburdened by these flood waters, you know, in, in just, I'll say regular, regular flood years if there is such a thing. So before I leave this slide, are there any other, any questions at this point? <clears throat> so I'm gonna shift gears just slightly here. Um, and this, is, this is the last sli slide I have before the, the closing at the end, before I turn it over to Greg here. Um, <clears throat> there was a, a study recently initiated, this is the Sacramento River General Reevaluation re Report. Um, it's a cost share feasibility study between the state, the Central Valley Flood Protection Board, and the Department of Water Resources. Uh, the agreement was signed earlier this year, and last week we completed the scoping charrette for this, this evaluation. Um, this really represents the first time that the, that the state is partnering with the Corps on a, on a three-year study under the new um, smart planning uh, initiative by the Corps to, to do, do studies you know, faster and cheaper, and hopefully better. Um, it's the first time we've really partnered with the Corps on a, on a system scale analysis. What this general reevaluation does is looks at the Sacramento River Basin as a whole, similar to what we did in our basin-wide feasibility studies, but more from a federal perspective to identify federal interest in some of the projects that we're looking at. So this study will include further study of the Yolo Bypass. There will be a focus on the Yolo Bypass in the Sacramento River GRR, um, and it will very likely include further evaluation from a, a federal perspective of the Deepwater Ship Channel and the use of that for uh, as I described, for some some managing some of those flood waters, um, 
And at this point, I don't have other really any information on it. We just finished the scoping last week, but there will be an update presented to the Central Valley Flood Protection Board at their at their October 23rd meeting, um, which those meetings are webcast. They are recorded. Uh, so if, if you if you want to chime into that, I, I invite you to do that. Um, and then we'll be laying out part of our you know engagement and information sharing for that that study effort as it gets underway. But it's on a pretty tight schedule to come up with a tentatively selected plan within the next year to year and a half. So um, the, the Department of Water Resources and the Corps are, are partnering, you know, so well in this study beyond what I've seen in the past. So it's very encouraging to see the level of engagement that, that the two agencies have together. We're co-locating staff, we're, we're, we're putting, you know, our best and brightest on this, on this effort uh, because it could have significant uh, value to the overall implementation of of what we're talking about doing in the old bypass. Um, so I think the timing is great for that. And that's all I had until we have a next step slide at the very end. Do you have any other questions? Commissioner Sandy? Yeah, thanks. Thank you for the presentation. I, I have a quick question related to the ports activity. Um, and I know the Sacramento Weir, when it's opened, it can never, it doesn't get closed until. Right, is that, that, is that true until after the whole right. season? Um, well, if, the, if there were um, a gate along the deep watership channel and things got better in a shorter period of time, would there be functioning? Of, because it would, we'd essentially be cutting the, oh. I mean, we'd be having a major, acti a major incident, so we'd be dealing with that, but I'm just thinking of access to the port. Right, I, th I think the way it would work is, you know, there would be a control manual for, for the, the gate, and it would be an operable gate. It wouldn't be a manual gate like the Sacramento Weir, and I think it would be something that could be opened and closed on a moment's notice. Um, I don't know how the operating rules would, would play out, but it, it certainly wouldn't be um, closed for, for a significant amount of time if there wasn't floodwaters to be diverted. So, good question. Mr. Kowalt. Um, the, uh, a few years back, the, this commission had approved uh, an agreement with, I can't remember the name of the, the company or the country, maybe Spain, um, around a, uh, a, an array of solar, um, a, a solar array down essentially this portion of the port's uh, land holdings between the, ch the channel and the, and the bypass. And uh, uh, the, like several projects of that era did not come to pass. But the, it, it reminds me that that that, I mean, that that sort of project is still it's still a feasible one um, technically for us, um, and so uh, making uh, uh, making sure that we have the ability to access meaningfully, not you know not with ten days notice to the to DWR that we're going to cross over the uh, uh, you know a gate facility or something of that nature, but that the totality of the land holdings that, that the port holds along the channel are are critical both for the channel operation itself, but also as we discovered in that process for potential other um, aligned economic activities. Mm -hmm. So if, the, if those were removed, that obviously has a significant um, mitigation required, or it needs to, you know, we need to, uh, uh, you know, be, we would need to be assured that we'd have the ability to still uh, make use of that, of that property, I think, in, the same, in, the, in a similar way. Um, you know, as, this, as, the, as the reviews and stuff go, go forward, I know for me, um, there's, uh, we're very supportive of the system approach to flood planning uh, here. Um, and we've been big participants, contributors, and beneficiaries of, of that system. Um, the, the areas that, that make me nervous are the, and this is true for conveyance and for, 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 for flood, is the, is the use of the ship channel for purposes other than the ship channel. Um, not because it's, it's a you know, moral or religious issue, but simply because it brings a whole set of regulatory um, advocacy and legal issues to the channel that we wouldn't otherwise have, um, and the you know the role of the stewardship council and your agency and 17 other agencies for a flood facility, so our ability to independently manage the channel for the main purposes for which it was it was it was created and invested in, and that the city, without really any help from the state, has bear, has kept alive <laughs> over these over this last decade as the, as the as the port was about to, about to go bankrupt. So we've we've made significant economic investments. And it would be important that uh, that we that we are able to achieve, uh, you know, the full amount of, of of legal protection. I don't know exactly how to do that, 
Um, but you know, just as an example, if, if, if 10 years from now we need to make, we need to then upgrade to new standards, the internal levy between the ship channel and Southport in our city. And at that time, um, thanks to the pioneering work that we've done together um, on the Southport levy on the Riverside, the new standard is that if you're going to do an improvement, you need to provide for a setback levy on a levy that wasn't, uh, wasn't facing a, a, you know, a, a flood facility before, and now we have to take out homes in the Southport area because that, of that facility. Those are the kinds of issues that we need to be very careful to foresee, and I don't, I'm not even sure whether I can, I, mean, I, I want to be optimistic, but I've dealt with these issues enough to know, um, you know that it's, hard to, it's hard to guess all of them in advance, but they do require some real um, thinking or, you know, and, and or some real mitigation um, to, to overcome, because those are, those are significant. The related issue is that it just, I don't, I really absolutely do not want to open up this facility as a potential conveyance facility. Mm -hmm. And so the, the notion that the, sh the ship channel is an all-purpose um, pipe um, here, um, you know, this, I know this is, this is not DWR's agenda. I, I, I'm, very, I'm very confident of that. But it is other people's agenda. Uh, and so it is, it's, it's going to be important, I think, for, 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 for me and others that, that we, uh, you know, that we're able to uh, uh, protect against those issues. So the technical work, you know, I'm, 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 I, you know, I think there's a lot of ways for, to, to, I'm encouraged that it's in the studies and I'm, I'm personally ready to, you know, help cooperate to figure out how to, how to look at the, at the, at the, at the flood system issues. Mm -hmm. But there's some way, way big, big issues around um, as well that I think we'll, we'll need to, you know, we'll need to work through if we ever get to a point where we're looking at real implementation. Definitely. I, I really appreciate your insights on that. It's helpful to hear kind of the on-the-ground realities that you guys are facing. Um, to address the, the question about the gate, or you didn't really have a question, but the comments about the, the, the gate structure, the operable gate, um, it can be designed in any which way, and I'm, I'm, I'm not the technical expert on what's been assumed so far in the studies and the cost estimates. Um, but I, I have heard of, of the idea of a, uh, maybe, maybe someone in the audience knows better what, what to call it, but basically an operable to allow ships to pass while the gate is closed, like in real time. So there, there are ways to, to build those kind of facilities, obviously, at, at some, some level of cost. But um, yeah, I think that, that gets to the issue that, that, that Commissioner Zandine was raising about <laughs> the impacts within the channel. What I'm talking about is, is over on top of the gate, right. mm -hmm. um, you know, can we can we still not only can we use it for maintenance purposes, but if we've if we've leased something to the south of location three, to to a solar array, for example, mm -hmm. are, can they easily access it for maintenance and for whatever, or do they have to, you know, they're going to be armed guards I who see. are saying you cannot know this is a <laughs> this is a federal flood facility, and we need to see your TWIC card, and it's, or else it's not possible. So that's right. it's a it's a slightly different an issue issue in that way. Mm -hmm. anyway, so the only other one I, I would point out, and it relates to these others, is that if, as you're looking at the Sacramento River GRR and the con, and the con, uh, so your partnership with the Corps at looking at the at the ship channel really can't avoid looking at the deepening issue mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of the, the, the just the, the sheer capacity of the channel um, to be a, a flood facility uh, could be improved by it being actually at its uh, at its federally authorized depth um, it all, would also make it much more attractive you know you know quite honestly to the to this to the to the port district to see that move forward if the deepening were were considered and it, it's it's and it's also in part a reminder of the fragility of these arrangements because the port, the core is not currently, uh, through no fault of their own, the, uh, the, they don't have funding from the from the federal budget, but they're not even do, they're not really even doing maintenance dredging at this point. And mm -hmm. so it, 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 it emphasizes both an opportunity there on the deepening and dredging side, but also it's an example of the kind of challenge that we face when we enter into these federal partnerships. This one is a 50 year old one where the port said, yeah, we'll help build it and we'll help maintain it, and then we're now that we're in it. Um, just out of bankrupt, you know, just out of bare bankruptcy, the now now the federal government's like, well, we didn't we didn't mean that. Uh, now it's on you to to main, to do the maintenance dredging, and and uh, so those are the, those are the kind of issues that that animate some of the anxiety that I'm raising. Okay. Very good to hear. Okay. Any other questions? So, Jeremy, you're going to pass the baton on, or yeah, to Greg, and then I, I think I I have one closing slide. Okay. Um, that in hindsight I probably should just put up here on, on the, in the front, but I'll be back up. Right. Thank you, Jeremy. So I'm going to move relatively quickly because I notice we're getting kind of low on time. So um, just to give you a heads up. So I think I think the port CEO has indicated we've got maybe another 15 minutes. So just for time management purposes, okay. just letting you know that. 
So here I just want to briefly touch on the regional flood management plan that West Safeca has been working in partnership within our region. Um, and in the green in the, in the graphic there is the entire region. And, and right down the middle of it is the corridor there is, that's the yellow bypass. It was definitely a focus for our regional um, planning effort uh, for looking at uh, projects from the ground up that could be potentially be implemented within our, our geographic region. Um, through that effort and the publication of our regional flood management plan back in July of 2014 and working uh, since then with the Department of Water Resources, um, we've actually come up with what we coined the, our locally preferred plan um, in, in discussions with uh, DWR management. Um, and there was quite a bit of alignment with what plans we had were able to cobble together um, within our region with what they were looking at in their alternatives <clears throat> in the basin-wide feasibility study. Um, and so actually one of the alternatives, alternative five, that was presented previously um, actually represents in a large degree the, the locally preferred plan from um, this region. And we're continuing the ongoing coordination with DWR moving forward, engaging uh, stakeholders uh, such as we are this evening um, and as, as that study continues. Man, real fast. I'm sure I voted for it before. The, I, I was struggling to figure out why, why, the, why the outline of the city didn't quite match our actual boundaries. Is the, is the Riverside area of the city considered a part of the bypass complex? So the complex, the Yolo Bypass Cashflow Complex is represented by the light green area. So our western border aligns with that complex. It's essentially the bypass and then the southern uh, portions in Salado County. Okay, maybe there's maybe the map is just slightly the askew. projection is wrong or whatever. But but there's there's some part of the city that's not yeah. represented there yeah. <laughs> that's that's gone missing inside the, the, the bypass complex. I think it's bad graphics. Okay, all right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I want to talk a little bit about the West Sacramento Levy Improvement Program and really in relation to. Port North, Port South, Ship Channel East, West Levees, and, and what we've looked at uh, over the years, uh, where we are with uh, the general evaluation report for West Sacramento. Um, and starting with the, the levy, um, excuse me, the alternatives analysis, analysis that was conducted or completed back in 2008, um, it did consider a number of um, alternatives for the various levees within the port system, including an operable type a structure in the uh, ship channel as one of the means for providing flood protection not only for the city um, but also for the port of West Sacramento. And generally most of the alternatives for the, those levies in there were, were fixed in place um, but the uncertainty with the cost and primarily with the dock structure at the port it became very problematic to try and quantify what a, an alternative might look at um, right there at the interface between the ships and the port um, became very complex very fast. Um, so we essentially punted uh, to looking at that in more detail um, from the West Sacramento perspective until we were near project implementation where we could look uh, more deeply. It certainly didn't qualify as one of the worst first, and so our efforts have been in the other areas that, that you know that we've uh, looked at to do those early implementation projects. And so likewise, the GRR uh, looked at a number of alternatives for the West Sacramento Levy Improvement uh, Program and the system. Um, and ultimately that came down to three alternatives that they carried forward um, for additional um, evaluation, cost considerations, and uh, net economic benefit considerations. Um, and those alternatives, um, one, and I'll just label alternative one, was fix all the levies within this, the Sacramento levy system, West Sacramento levy system, fix in place. Alternative three, which they carried forward, was fix all the levies in place with the exception of uh, inserting an operable uh, gate in the ship channel. And then alternative five, which is the one being recommended to be carried forward to the chief's report, and final report is uh, fix all the levies in place and the setback levy in the Southport um, reach along the Sacramento River. Well, Greg, I think Christopher hit on, on it earlier. We have to be very careful with the setback levy process. I mean, we know what we're going through on the river now. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I don't think that 
the policymakers will want to be going through that anytime soon. And so we need to make sure that um, there is a partnership between the feds, the state, and the city in order to make sure that those issues get resolved up front rather than um, uh, a setback levy being placed in and, and homes have to be moved or whatever it might be. So, you know, I, I think that we need to make sure that those kinds of issues are looked at and resolved and brought to the port commission so that the port doesn't run into that. Agreed. Um, this next slide, I think, is a really good uh, graphical representation of what the differences are between um, a closure operable gate structure in the ship channel versus um, what's currently being proposed um, to uh, improve the levee system for West Sacramento. Prior to the construction of the ship channel where we bisected the city and, and created the port of West Sacramento, um, the city had approximately 22 miles of levees um, that, that bordered the city. With the introduction of that ship channel, we introduced about 11 additional miles of levee system that now need to be monitored, maintained, and now improved through new uh, engineering standards. Additionally, um, there's about 17 miles approximately of bypass levee that's seen on the insert on the graphic on the right for the GRR, GRR Alternative 5. That becomes part of the West Sacramento levee system um, that needs to be improved to pre prevent what um, is called a, a backwater condition that could occur if the Yolo bypass levee were to fail, waters would come back up the ship channel and then flood the city from the interior. Um, so all told, there's about 52 miles of levee system recognized by the, uh, the federal government um, as part of the West Sacramento, West Sacramento levee system. So as you can see, and it, depending on where you put where one might put a operable uh, gate structure, it essentially would restore the, the levee system that would need to be operated and maintained back to the something very much like what we had prior to the ship channel, about 22 miles of levee. So it would significantly reduce uh, the level of effort required um, to improve the levees, as well as what following those improvements, what would be required to operate and maintain. Also, if you look at the graphic on the right, um, the proposed port north levy fix is a, uh, by the core, is a approximately four foot uh, flood wall that would parallel industrial boulevard. Um, it does not provide positive flood protection for the port of West Sacramento. It does for the city, um, but a high water event, um, that port infrastructure would potentially be underwater. Um, alternative three, or any alternative that looked at a, uh, gate type structure that would be closed in the event of a high water um, type event does provide that positive flood protection for not only the interior of the city but also the port of West Sacramento as well. Um, in either case, uh, for the city anyways, 200 year level of flood protection could be uh, achieved through either uh, an alternative being recommended by the Corps uh, with the West Sacramento GRR or um, should another alternative rise either through uh, DWR's efforts with the Basin Wide Feasibility Study or, as Jeremy mentioned, that partnership with the Sacramento River GRR, um, th this would be another alternative for providing that level of protection for the port and for the city. And that was uh, the sum of what I was going to present from the flood protection program point of view. Be happy to answer any questions before I turn it over to, to Rick to talk about port related operations. All right, thank you, Greg. Any questions at this point? I do. So I actually don't understand what you just said. The, <laughs> the, just the basics. So the, if, if the point of the alternative five was to pr protect against the flooding from the inside, from the from the back backwash, as you call it, backwater condition. Backwater condition. Yeah. So how does how does the gate, the alternative three gate, prevent? Or, saw, or fix that condition? So, 
So if you will, if the gate was located at the turn where it enters, this, enters the city, um, the flood protection from the Yolo bypass levee no longer becomes an issue. Um, the gate itself presents the water from backing up through um, the ship channel, and then we would improve um, whatever, you know, the levees on the deep water ship channel east levee um, south of that closure structure. So essentially, wherever that structure would reside, we would need to improve the Yolo bypass levee upstream of it and the ship channel okay. east levee downstream of it. Okay. And it's just a trade-off wherever you, you locate that. It's just a trade-off on the number. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I, I think it was partly because the location of the, if the X is the gate in alternative three is so far south, it just doesn't look like you're, I mean, the, it doesn't look like there's, you're saving that much, but I, I, I get what you're saying. And, and then I think um, one of the things that we've, we've typically talked about what a, an operable gate might be, and it, the assumption always been normally open to allow uh, unrestricted um, maritime traffic and um, only closed during a high water event. And one of the things, the, the team, as we were uh, discussing things just recently, you know, what if there was a, a gate that was normally closed, providing positive flood protection all the time, spanning, to, you know, for maintenance, operation, whatever, and it was only open to allow the maritime traffic to pass? Um, that might be another alternative um, that may require additional O&M, um, but it certainly um, is something that we could explore if that became uh, something that, that seemed to be desirable. I think in that case, that was the case. One of the areas you'd need to study a little bit would be the fisheries, because fish do migrate up the deep water channel, and uh, whether they be salmon or whether it be striped bass, whatever they may be, um, there may be some study that is necessary to uh, make sure that, that mm -hmm. issue is taken care of. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a good point. All right, <clears throat> thank you, Greg. So. In the interest of time, I think we've got about three or four minutes left. Rick, is that going to work for you, or I think Rick's going to be? Yeah, my comments are brief. Thanks, Greg. Um, so when we think about impacts on uh, poor operations under, under normal conditions today. That the sh uh, vessel traffic in the ship channel is under the control of the San Francisco Bar Pilots and the Coast Guard. In a in a high water event today, they will and they have closed the ship channel. I believe that occurred in. Um, in pretty much 10 year intervals, as um, uh, Jeremy uh, indicated, um, in the late uh, 90s and again about 10 years ago. So we think about impacts to the port, um, the the vessel traffic interruption is less of an impact than, than the third bullet point there, um, and that's the maintenance uh, dredging. So to the extent that high, high flows are depositing additional uh, sediments into the channel, um, that would be our, our larger concern and, and what is what is the degree of that sedimentation. So um, that's going to have to be studied, I, I would think, in conjunction with the Corps of Engineers who um, are the dredging uh, contractor or um, the, the responsible party for, for the dredging. Um, so that's to be determined, but I, in, in my opinion, that's the larger impact. Questions of Rick at this point. So, um, just just a comment um, back to the original presentation. So, I, I could not agree more on uh, Commissioner Kambalden's uh, concerns about a couple, a few things. The economic development, preserving that. I think I think we have to, as a port commission, we have to think about the long term sustainability and the notion that we need to be um, uh, mindful about what we can use in terms of economic uh, stimulation for the port as we uh, contemplated. Um, the solar panels years ago, although it didn't come to fruition, that was certainly a possibility that at the time was critical, and we need to. I think we need to continue to think about how to how to preserve that going going forward. Uh, the regulatory controls, in terms of the legal controls of how we manage the systems and the flows and the water and, and all the other regulatory agencies, um, are are um, we we we've got it pr pretty good right now, and I and I think. Uh, at the risk of, of enduring more costs and more regulatory pressures and controls for a port that's barely making it to begin with is, is essential. And then uh, I couldn't agree more on the conveyance piece. Um, I think if we're going to go forward 
with the concept similar to this, the notion that it's not going to serve as the conveyance piece that's been talked about in other in other forums um, needs to be uh, uh, essential. Right. Any other comments, questions, closing? Jeremy, you have anything final? Because we're next steps. Fine. Next, one, one last slide. I think he said he had next steps, yeah. right? You did a great job, uh, so you covered most of it for me. Um, so just, I think some of these are self-explanatory. We covered them, but we will continue to look at this um, as an option. Um, we are early on in the process, and that's when we want to come to you, let you know what we're up to and what we're finding. Um, but we will be evaluating, uh, need to evaluate the long-term management needs, including O&M, sediment, uh, dredging, and whatnot, as well as who's the owner-operator. I appreciate the comments on the regulatory controls that you guys are concerned about. That'll certainly help us shape the, the scoping of, of further evaluations. Um, so I think that's that's about it. A lot of continued coordination on all on all fronts here. Um, we look forward to coming back to you, you know, when when the time is right. I'm not sure when that is yet, but when we get far enough down the road to where we have some pertinent information or if you have other information or requests, we're happy to come to you anytime. And, and share information on our, our planning studies. Um, as, the, as the Sacramento River GRR gets underway, we can, we can certainly come if you're interested to hear, hear about how that's progressing. Um, but I just want to close by saying I appreciate you know, your time today um, and, and hearing about your, your questions and comments and insights. I think it will be very helpful as we move forward and try to scope what's going to be important to the, to the Port Commission and the vi long-term viability of the Port, whatever that looks like for you guys in terms of success. We want to make sure that we're we're working as, as partners on this, and um, you know, just look forward to future future conversations. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank I'd you. like to thank, thank you, you for coming and exploring these ideas. Oh, yep. Thanks, Rex. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, that was just a presentation. No action needed. So, uh, right, Mr. CEO, no, no action needed on that. So the next item is the commission reports. Are there any commission reports at this point? None. See none. Port CO report. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, thank you for your attention to this issue. It's great to have the presentation and uh, daylight this topic that's been kicking around City Hall for about a year, uh, maybe even longer, but it was important for this presentation to be done, so appreciate that. Uh, for the City Council, we will have time to cover our closed session items. The only other thing I wanted to do was introduce uh, Amanda Berlin, who is our uh, new assistant city manager. Uh, Amanda oh, will start good. work on Monday, but she has spent a lot of time with us today. Wanted right. to see a little bit of the Port Commission. Uh, we'll watch our city council meeting on TV tonight and be with her kid, but uh, she's going to be a great addition to us. She's been uh, at Remy uh, Moose and Manley for 12 years as a senior counsel there. She's represented a lot of cities as her clients, and we're just thrilled to have her. And one of the great things is she lives here in the city and she's vested in our success. So uh, Amanda starts on Monday and Really uh, hope that you'll welcome her when you see her around town. Excellent. All right. Welcome. All right. Welcome. Yep. Forward to it. Great. All right. Uh, that is, so we're looking for a motion to adjourn. Thank you very much, Mr. So Commissioner Cabaldon. Thank you for our motion to adjourn. And I'll second it. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Christoph, uh, so moved. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to hit you up for this Hillary thing, so do not agree to do hand for an Angela or somebody else. It's November 4th. It's on lunch. It'll be an Angela. Thank you, Oscar, for chairing. Yeah, yeah, thank you for, for being here. Wait, I don't know if you can reach over that. Yeah. So, this is Bill Kristoff. Oh. Anna Berlin. Nice to meet you. Okay. And our mayor. Are you helping oh, that thing? No. Okay. So, this is our mayor. <laughs> this guy's pretty healthy. I am. Yeah. Welcome. Physically. Yeah. Physically. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.